Hi, I'm Ellie, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the different components of the climate action simulation role playing game. Uh, so just to start with an overview of the agenda of a typical climate action simulation it begins with introductions, introduce yourself, your audience, that kind of thing. Then uh, transitions into an opening presentation from uh, someone playing the UN Secretary General. That might be you as a facilitator or co-facilitator. Um, at this point, too, if your audience hasn't gotten a chance to read their briefing statements that give them context for the roles they're playing, then this is a good time to do that. Uh, then you go into the round one of the negotiations in which groups meet. They come up with their plans. They make proposals. We test those in inroads. Then that is followed by a second round where that process is repeated. And then the entire simulation ends with a debrief in which uh, you give the audience a chance to reflect on the insights that have come up along the way. All told, it ends up typically being about two to three hours. Uh, it can go much longer. Um, and sometimes it's even broken up into multiple different sessions. It all just depends on what the goals are of uh, the exercise that you're running and also just the, the amount of time you have available. Um, so quite often we use six groups uh, for the climate action simulation. This would be one group representing our clean energy interests, clean tech, our wind and solar companies. Another group representing conventional energy. This would be our coal, oil and gas uh, interest, then there could be a third group uh, representing our climate justice hawks. These are global activists from around the world representing the boldest possible climate action. Another group represents industry and commerce. This could be car manufacturers, uh, retailers, that kind of thing. And then another group represents land, agriculture, and forestry interest, um, thinking about how we manage land and that, that sort of thing. And then the final group, uh, is world governments. So these would be representatives of governments from around the world. There is a variation uh, that a lot of that's awful, also popular that a lot of people use, and that's to break up that last group, world governments, into three separate groups. And so you see that represented here, where instead of having all of the government interest in one group, you would have one group representing the developed nations, uh, European Union countries, uh, United States, so on. And then you'd have a group representing our rapidly emerging economies, China, Brazil, uh, India, that those nations. And then the third group within this kind of governmental block would be uh, the other developing nations, representing small island nation states, uh, countries throughout Southeast Asia, Middle East, uh, Africa, South America, that kind of thing. Um, and your setup, it's a, uh, it's a really important to think about the different components that you can bring in to really help inspire people to play their roles and really help set the whole scene for the simulation that you're, you're creating. So if you're doing this online, we really encourage you to use virtual backgrounds and uh, get people to change their name. And so it says something, you know, like the, the group that they're representing. Um, if you're doing this in person, you can set it up using different props. So maybe you have a number of groups sitting at tables with um, if they're powerful or wealthy groups um, that give them snacks and refreshments to to have um, maybe the group playing the climate hawks, uh, because typically uh, activists don't have a whole lot of power and global halls of power. Maybe they're sitting on the floor, um, that kind of thing. Be creative and come up with something that is, that's fun for you and your participants uh, uh, to make the best possible experience. Um, another way too that we help participants get into their roles is through briefing statements. On the Climate Interactive website, you will find uh, all those different groups that I that I just mentioned, briefing statements for each one that people can read to help them understand the interests of the groups that they're representing. Uh, we also have an inroads control panel guide. This can help people get oriented to all of the different um, sectors and sliders that are available within inroads. Following kind of people's getting familiar with the roles they're about to play. Um, I, if I'm the sole facilitator or if I'm working with a co-facilitator, I will change my outfit. So maybe I'll put on a blazer, uh, put on a suit jacket, something to take a more formal uh, demeanor and then come into the room if it's in person or sh turn my video on if I'm doing it virtually and 
uh, give a speech as if I was a UN official. And you can look for examples online of the kinds of speeches on climate change that the actual secretary general provides. Um, and also in our facilitator guide, you can find a sample scripts uh, to follow along to if you're interested there. But be creative. Again, uh, have fun with it. Uh, practice your speech in advance. Practice it with people you have around your house. Um, and, and that is, again, one of those moments where people see you role playing and then that kind of gives them permission to also role play and will make the whole much whole, the whole rest of the experience go go more smoothly. So the overall process, once you've kind of set the context and set everyone up, you go into the first round and the way each round is structured is that teams break into team meetings, they decide on the actions they want to take, then they pick a delegate uh, from each team who then, once all of the groups are back and return to the main room, uh, they, the, a, a delegate from each team will make a two minute speech to propose uh, the, the action that they're gonna take and why they're gonna take that action. So at each um, round, a group can either propose a new solution uh, that hasn't been taken yet, or they can reverse a previous action. For example, if they didn't like what a previous group had proposed, uh, they can remove that action. Then each action uh, is added or removed uh, to inroads and the results are evaluated. And then as the round closes, um, the, after every team has offered one solution. And then uh, typically then you just go into a second round of negotiations. Maybe if you have time, a third round of negotiations, um, it just depends on uh, what, what kind of setup you're working with. One component that we ask people to really think about as they're in their breakout groups, reflecting on the different policies that they might adopt is how can they take what we call at Climate Interactive a multi-solving lens? So this is what are the different ways in which a group can think about the actions that they're proposing and how that will have multiple benefits beyond just uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. So prompt prompt your groups to think about that and brainstorm different ideas and share those in their speeches that they give. Um, and a second component of this too is how asking your group, how might you ensure that marginalized communities are not disproportionately burdened and are left out of the opportunities to address and act on climate change? And again, in that speech, Make, try and encourage your, your participants to name some of those different qualities um, so that it becomes part of the discussion. Um, some more details about the, the way perhaps the round one team meeting might work. Um, using ha Have the teams look at that inroads control panel. If they're not familiar with inroads, that can help them get a sense for uh, the types of solutions that you're looking for from them. And Ask them to identify, I'd say two to three actions. Sometimes um, a group ahead of them will have the same idea. And so they want to have a backup plan uh, for, for when the, the plenary rounds and proposals get shared. Um, talk about, have them talk about their overall strategy, identify those multi-solving points, um, and then uh, nominate a delegate who's going to give that speech uh, to the main audience. After that, uh, then the, each group will present their proposal. So here, for example, is somebody playing a climate justice hawk representative saying, we propose taxing coal. Um, and so after that, the, you know, the speech is made, maybe they would highlight some of the equity considerations they're factoring in saying, we propose taxing coal because it will both lower greenhouse gas emissions and help air quality across the world. Uh, then at that point, the facilitator either you or a co-facilitator will then input those uh, those proposals into En-ROADS and share some of the insights. Just look at the dynamics and um, and illum help illuminate some of the things that are going on in the model uh, with, after that proposal. Then uh, you go into round two. In round two, we oftentimes see a lot more lobbying. Uh, groups may want to go talk to other groups to advocate to change their position. Uh, this can be a lot more lively. And this is a lot, a lot of times where the energy of a climate action simulation really comes out. It can be a lot of fun. And these second round meetings, uh, similar to the first round, groups discuss as a team what their follow-up actions might be, and then they do any negotiations that uh, they think are necessary. Again, then uh, we join, have the whole group join back together 
Um, they make their proposals, each group, and then those are tested in En-ROADS and we share those insights with the whole group. After the first two rounds uh, conclude, then we go into a debrief of what the experience just was. And I typically make this a pretty formal transition where um, if, if I'm in person and the groups are, are sitting with their different uh, uh, specific role playing groups, I'll say, OK, move the chairs around. Let's circle them up uh, and take off your roles. Take off your name tag. Take off your suit jacket if you're playing a formal uh, UN diplomat role. Um, and then let's talk about our experience um, if this is on Virtually, I would tell people to remove their virtual backgrounds, change their names back to their own name, that kind of thing. And in the debrief, the way I oftentimes kick it off is by um, asking people to take a moment to reflect, take one minute of silence and say, think of something you would love about being part of this sort of future. And just before I do that, I usually summarize the inroads scenario that we've built within that the the time we were we were negotiating and sharing proposals summarize that and then say what would you love about being a part of this sort of future then i'll watch my watch for one minute pause just give people that time to reflect it can be a mo moment that's really poignant and powerful for people to just sit uh, with their own thoughts for a minute um, after the minute concludes i'll ask people to share if any insights came up um, and sometimes you can have really, really uh, poignant things come up that, that were unexpected. I'll also ask people too sometimes, how are you feeling? Um, the, the role playing aspect where people get into different characters can be um, very lively, kind of intense at times. And afterwards, people can be experiencing a whole range of different emotions and it can be useful to surface those and talk about them as a group. Some people may be feeling entirely frustrated because they weren't able to see as much action as they wanted to, while others are having an opposite reaction of a sense of hope or possibility at the fact that they were able to make so much more progress than they thought was possible. Just acknowledge that, you know, there's a lot of different ranges of emotions that come up and none of them are right or wrong. It's just where people are at. Um, the other thing too, don't forget, grab a photo at the end, you know, m m take a moment to, to capture uh, this uh, experience that you've just done with, with this group of people. Uh, we love to see photos at Climate Interactive, so feel free to email them to us too. Uh, share them on Twitter, social media, where, whatever, uh, whatever you like, um, and tell people about your experience. Um, also, don't forget to register your event. That's, uh, that's something that we really appreciate you doing. Um, but yeah, those are the different components of the climate action simulation. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll uh, see you soon.